What's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Narcs Nemesis. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That helps YouTube's algorithm push out this content and push it out to more people that need it. Somebody liked it for you, so make sure you like it for somebody. If you need a one-on-one -on -one phone session, the link is in the description. If you want to donate to the channel, the link is also in the description. My new song, Maniac, y'all make sure y'all go check it out. It's available on all platforms, and it's also available here on the channel. Let me know what y'all think. Um, it's about uh, my post feelings after the narcissistic situation. So y'all make sure y'all go like it, share it, send it to a friend, use it on TikTok, all that good stuff. Leave me some criticism here on the uh, channel and let me know what y'all think. Uh, but today I'm going to talk to y'all about a client of mine let, uh, gave me a real interesting topic yesterday when we had our one-on-one -on -one session. Today I want to talk to y'all about the spiritual Hoover. Now we get the Hoover by proxy and the, um, the phone calls, the text, the butt dialing and the pop-ups and you know, have you seen my sock or I'm going to need my goldfish back and all that shit. And have you seen my VHS, the fucking Lion King and all that stupid ass shit they send to try to get convo out of you and everything like that. But I can't believe I forgot this, but shout out uh, to my client yesterday. I won't put his name out there and all that shit, but shout out to him yesterday. We were talking about this and I can't believe I forgot about this. We're going to talk about the spiritual spiritual Hoover. I can't even talk. Um, what the spiritual Hoover is, and to me, this is one of the most effective Hoovers that they can possibly do for the simple fact that I might get a little weird here, but if y'all ain't with it, log off. I don't give a damn. It is what it is. The spiritual Hoover to me is the most effective um, kind of Hoover because it's directly cerebral. Um, the spiritual Hoover is basically when a narcissist and or their family comes to visit you in your dreams. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't believe in energy and spirits and all that stuff, but I'm telling you right now, I went through the same thing several times for months when after I finally blocked her number because I had blocked her on all socials and um, shit, I blocked that lady on Cash App. I blocked her on um, Google. I went and found her Snapchat, blocked her on that, found her um, TikTok and all that stuff that we weren't even on i went and found her accounts and blocked her um sisters all that i never met her sister never met her brother but i got a name and i specialize in finding people so i went and found his account blocked his ass went and found her accounts blocked uh blocked her ass too so um when they figure out that they that they can't get in contact with you any other kind of way in the physical realm they will visit you in the spiritual realm because like i tell y'all this ain't just no regular relationship that's why i don't feel like a re uh, regular relationship that's why i don't feel like a regular breakup because this is a direct attack on your spirit this is a oh somebody pulled up next to me i had to had to make sure it wasn't no issue um this is a direct attack on your spirit. This is a direct attack on your soul. So you blocking this individual, you separating from this individual or being separated or whatever the case is, you close the door on the devil. You close the door on the minions. You close the door on those demons, those devils that demonic spirit you close the door in the physical realm and like i said when you do this the narcissist is gonna hold on for dear life because it lost the host so now they have to visit you in the spiritual realm 
So you will get some visits from the narcissist in your dreams. And man, it's a weird thing about me. And I'm gonna tell y'all, cause I feel like y'all family. And if y'all think I'm out of my mind, I don't give a damn anyway. Um, I have the ability to conversate in my dreams. Like if somebody talking to me in my dreams or whatever, stuff that I would normally say in real life, I know how to articulate it in my dreams. So I can have a full conversation of what I want to say word for word based off of what I'm being told. Now, I haven't got to the point where I can control my actions at all, but I can control my conversation and my consciousness on that level. Um, so this lady, I remember the first, the first dream that I had, she came, we were at somebody's house and she came and sat by the, like I was sitting on the sofa and she came and sat by me on the sofa and she was like, why did you leave me? And, um, you know, who are you talking to? Are you really happy? Um, how could you just stop talking to me like that? And, um. I can't remember what I said back specifically, but it was more on the lines of, you know what you did. I don't need to explain anything. You know, um, why are you sitting here anyway? Something like that. I can't remember what I said word for word, but I remember exactly what she, what she was saying. It was basically her going, you know, trying to get some validation for why I left or whatever the case was. And this wasn't the first dream. And, I had another dream, and this is where it kind of got scary. Uh, we were like going up a hill or something, a mountain or something like that. And I was in last, I was last at the bottom of the mountain. She was in front, in the middle, and it was some other guy. I guess it was some guy that she was interested in or whatever the case is. I couldn't really see his face like that. But we were all trying to go up this mountain. And, you know, I was trying, for some reason, I was trying to catch up to her because it was like at this point, I was more in the asking questions state. And I remember I was asking questions when, when her back was turned. We were going up a mountain or whatever, her back was turned to me. And I asked her, why did you do what you did? And her reply, I remember this word for word, I'll never forget it. And she said, nobody told you to trust me. I'll never forget that. And when she said that, like I said, she's walking up the mountain, I'm behind her. And at this point I had caught up to her after I asked this question and she gave me that answer. You know how you put your hand on somebody's shoulder from behind and you turn them around or whatever. And I did that. I put my hand on her shoulder and I turned her around. This is where the shit got crazy. I didn't see her face, the physical face. I saw whatever spirit inhabited her. That's the face I seen. It was dark. It was distorted. The eyes were, were they black? The eyes were black. And it was just dark and distorted. I'll never forget this. And oddly, I wasn't freaked out, but I knew if I told somebody this story, they would look at me like I'm insane. But like I say, I don't care. You know, and once I seen her face, I woke up. That was, those were two of the dreams that I remember. I had more, but I don't remember those as vividly as um, I remember those two. So when they can't reach you in the physical realm, that spirit that occupies them, it will come try to convince you in the spiritual realm. A lot of times you'll have dreams about them being in therapy, which is only an illusion to make you think, well, maybe they're changing. Maybe they're getting help. Maybe I should reach out to see how they're doing. Sometimes you'll have an illusion about them being with somebody else and it'll give you the illusion that they're moving on and they're happy. 
Um, you'll have dreams about them having a kid and it'll make you think, okay, damn, I left this person. What if they're pregnant? Oh, I left this person or, you know, um, if you have kids with them, you're thinking, okay, well, how are my kids? I need to reach out to them. But all it is, is a, it's a play on your emotional imagination. And it's meant to trigger you to want to reach out to that person. It's meant to trigger you to want more answers. And by them uh, visiting you in the spiritual realm, it's to me, it's way more effective because it plays off of your deepest wants and your deepest desires for this situation. Um, cause it's directly cerebral. It's not, you know, a what if, or by chance I ran into them or anything like that. This is directly cerebral. This is directly personal. That's why I say, I think this is the most, um, the most, um, I guess, dangerous or most effective Hoover that they can use because it it is coming to you direct. And then, you know, a lot of people will misinterpret, oh, well, if I'm dreaming about somebody, that means they can't stop thinking about me. And that could be the, that could be the case. But what I'm saying is just because somebody can't stop thinking about you does not mean you need to go re-entertain them. Just because you can't stop thinking about somebody does not mean you need to go re-engage them. Sometimes you can't stop thinking about them because maybe you're not thinking about them. You're thinking about the pain that they put you through. Because I remember when I was going through my healing journey, and I still am, but the earlier stages of me going through my healing journey, I got over the person before I got over the trauma that that person caused, if that made any sense. Because I made it um, abundantly clear to myself in the earlier stages of my healing that this person is not who they said they were first off. And also I took away that person's responsibility for my trauma. The reason I did that is because when you give people responsibility over your trauma and the way that you are, and I'm this way because of this person, not saying that that's entirely false, because it may very well be the reason why you're the way that you are. But when you take away their responsibility for your trauma, you also take away their permission for you to heal because a lot of times when we give these people responsibility for our trauma and it's your fault and it it may very well be their fault the damage may very well be by their design but when you take away their responsibility you also take away their permission for you to heal so when you when you get rid of that, oh, okay, well, this is yours, and you're the reason, you're this, you're that, and you separate that, now they no longer have control over how you heal. Because what's stopping a lot of people from healing are two simple words. I'm sorry. That is that is what's carrying so much hate, so much anger, so much animosity, so much friction. That is what's stopping so many people from healing because that I'm sorry translates in their head into I'm free. No, you're already free. You just need to free yourself up here. And this can go with any childhood trauma, any situation, any um, tragic incident or, you know, stuff of that nature. Take away ownership from that person who did whatever they did to you. Take away their ownership. And now you take ownership of it. So now you're in control of it. 
And yeah, you can forgive that person and all of that shit there, but you might not ever get a sorry. Then what? You might not ever get a my bad, players fuck up, whatever. You might not ever get that. That cannot be the reason you don't heal because you might not ever hear that. So you're going to let that shit carry on 10, 20, 15, 30 years because you ain't here, I'm sorry? No. Take that, and, and you might look at it as, oh, well, okay, they're getting away. What they getting away with? Because anybody that has to wake up every day and figure out how can I fuck up somebody else's life because I feel fucked up inside, you're not getting away with nothing because every single waking moment for them is suffering. And a lot of the suffering might not have nothing to do with you. It's some internal shit that's been going on in their childhood forever and it cannot be extinguished. And it's not your responsibility to extinguish it. But what can you do? You can take ownership of your trauma and you can heal yourself. You can take ownership of your trauma and you could become better than you ever been. You could take ownership of your trauma and release yourself from that I'm sorry prison. You can take ownership of your trauma and give yourself permission to heal. Because that's all you're doing when you, oh, I got to wait on them to get it. I got to wait on them to understand. I got to wait on them to give me um, an explanation. All you're doing is giving them permission. Giving them your permission to heal. And it don't belong to them. Because as long as you give them permission to heal, you will heal on their time. And if they had a say so, they, they would never let you heal. Because if they never let you heal, you'll always be in contact with them. You'll always be binded by them. You will always be attached to them. You will always be spiritually chained to them. You will always be soul tied to them. Cut that soul tie, unlock those chains, and release yourself from their permission. And through this video, I grant you your permission back to heal. Through the name of God, I grant you your permission back to heal. Take it away from them and reclaim ownership of your life. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, you need a one-on-one. -on -one. The link is in the description. You want to donate to the channel. Link is in the description. Check out my new song, Maniac. Link is in the description. It's about the post after effects of narcissistic abuse. Um, that's all I got, man, today. Um, another way. How this shit go? Look, I forgot my own damn uh, phrase because I'm sick. So I'm delirious a little bit. Another day, another way. And you ain't got to listen, but I know you heard me.